Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for attending my topic today. Uh, today my topic is about cut containers performance evaluation and optimization on ARM64. My name is Justin He. I mainly focus, focus on the container virtualization technology on ARM64. Here is today's agenda. Firstly, I will give you a brief, brief introduction uh, about what is cut container. Uh, then I will give you the status update on ARM64. That is what we have done so far. Uh, then I will go through the performance evaluation from several aspects. At last, I will introduce the, the two simple users uh, uh, user stories in real cases. Uh, if you have used the dot container, maybe you have thought about the question, how to make the, uh, the container more secure? You can uh, drop some Linux capabilities such such as uh, uh, make uh, you can mount the root FS with read only mode. Uh, you can use uh, SE Linux and app armor to protect the content container. And also you can use uh, the sitcom to allow or disallow some system calls. But the more you add the sick, uh, the sick the mid layer will be, and you will uh, get more performance overhead. So, the the actually the cut container is a combination or trade off between uh, the virtual machine and the uh, container. It is uh, compatible with OCI runtime spec, therefore works uh, seamlessly with the uh, dock engine. Besides, it also supports the, the Kubernetes and uh, CII through the CIIO and the C uh, C container D. Uh, in other words, you can choose, uh, transparently choose selected between the round C and the cut container. Uh, the, this is the um, cut container's architecture design flow chart. Uh, the cut agent is a process running in the guest as a supervisor uh, for managing the, the, uh, the containers and the, the process are running within those containers. Uh, the Kata proxy offers access to the VM Kata agent to both Kata stream and Kata runtime. Its main role is to route all the IO stream, uh, uh, streams and the signals. It connects to the Kata agent on on a Unix domain socket, i.e. VSOC. Kata proxy use Yamax to multiplex gRPC connections on its connection. The shim process runs in the, in the host environment, uh, handling standard IO and the signals on behalf of con con containers process, which is inside the guest. Uh, but uh, 
After the, the cut container 2.0, some parts of this flowchart will be changed a little bit. So uh, this is what, what uh, the new items in cutter 2.0. For example, CII and container D, shim V2. Uh, uh, it will redu reduce many, uh, many parts of the, the architectural design flowchart. And uh, it uses uh, uh, Rust agent uh, to replace the, the Golang agent. And uh, it used the TTRPC is a tiny uh, uh, GRPC implementation to replace the original GRPC library. It used VSOC to replace the virtual IO serial. And uh, uh, by default, uh, uh, the, the cloud hypervisor will uh, replace the uh, Cumul hypervisor. It also supports the guest C group V2. And uh, what's the status? Uh, uh, of uh, cut container on ARM64. Uh, totally speaking, it can run, uh, can be run smoothly on ARM64. Mm, you, can e uh, you can install the cut container uh, on ARM64 by two ways. Uh, firstly, is the snap install, and the secondly, you can uh, build it from the source code. Uh, to run the cut container, uh, you can use the CTR command line. Here is the if, uh, examples. Uh, you can use the CTR image uh, pool to pull the, uh, the con uh, container image and uh, uh, run the a simple application uh, by using the CTR ROM. Also, you can run the cut container on a Raspberry Pi 4 platform with minor changes. Here is the feature comparison result between ARM64 and the x86. As for the hypervisor support, uh, x86 supports uh, Cumul, Firecracker, Cloud Hypervisor, and uh, Acrom. But uh, Acrom is uh, not supported uh, on ARM64. The cut container will use uh, will, will let the hypervisor to create a NVDM device and then mount it as uh, the the guest rootfs. It can speed up uh, the boot time and uh, uh, share the 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 guest rootfs. And the virtual IOFS feature is uh, uh, used uh, in the container rootfs, which I uh, which I will introduce the in later slides. Mm, the altruistic mark for the ARM64 cumul uh, here. Uh, is uh, the upstream cumul had supported this feature, but uh, we also need some time to introduce the, it uh, on, uh, uh, on ARM64 for cut container. Uh, next, uh, the, uh, the VM template is a useful technology to speed up uh, the boot time. Um, uh, this feature is 
supported on both. And also the Rust uh, agent is supported on both. Uh, the memory hot plug, uh, we, uh, the upstream had uh, supported on ARM64, but uh, we will uh, introduce the in, in the future. The VM, uh, v, uh, VCPU hot plug, uh, mm, and someone had uh, sub, uh, posted uh, a patch series to support it uh, in the QMU, in both QMU and the K uh, kernel community, mm, but I uh, haven't uh, got uh, merged yet. Also, uh, the, for the next KVM um, uh, KVM feature, ARM um, 64 KVM. Uh, uh, the community has uh, discussed uh, um, the, it's, uh, one huge, one big series. And after that, after the community merged them, we, we, can, uh, we can introduce it into ARM64 for container. Okay, the next slide. Uh, virtual IFS is a shared file system that lets uh, a virtual machine access a directory tree on the host. Unlike the, the existing approaches, it is designed to uh, offer local file system semantics and the performance. Uh, the, the low level of the virtual IFS is, uh, is a uh, FU's implementation. The FU's protocol is not based on the network uh, protocol. It means a more uh, faster, uh, faster performance and uh, uh, better perf uh, POSIX uh, semantics capabilities. Uh, the, there is a independent virtual IFS demo process, more secure and uh, needn't to maintain the, the device mapper. Uh, uh, the, uh, and uh, 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 there is a DEX mode. You can uh, with this uh, in uh, with this text mode enabled, uh, the host and the guest can sh share the um, memory and uh, improve the performance. And you can also bypass the guest page cache, avoid uh, the unnecessary VM exit. And the, the back end is in user space, uh, which is uh, uh, convenient for, for, for the user to further tune. But we once observed that the virtual IFS will increase the system uh, system level memory footprint because you know uh, it uses additional uh, shared pages, which uh, this allows uh, the the KSM to merge the pages. The inter internal tests showed that. It will significantly improve the file system performance in uh, Kata uh, compared with uh, virtual IO 9P. Uh, from this chart, uh, we use the, the, the FIO uh, read write test. Uh, the data improves, uh, uh, increase about uh, 10 to 20 times in different cases. Uh, this is the, the what we have do, done for the functional features the development. Um, firstly, we enabled the runtime and the Rust agent 
on ARM64. Um, we maintain the, the CI uh, test subsystem. And uh, we enable the Firecracker and even the Cloud Hypervisor on ARM64. Especially, uh, we, uh, Cloud Hypervisor is another uh, individual uh, uh, independent project uh, repo we uh, develop uh, enable the cloud hybrid from scratch on arm 64 we also finish the uh, kubernetes integration test with kata uh, container uh, there's a to do list uh, in the future for us to do such as the memory and the vcpu hot plug and uh, the important uh, next state virtualization. Um, so, so to summarize the performance uh, comparison between different architectures, uh, we choose the, the, some important uh, aspects such as uh, the boot time, the binary code size, and the memory footprint. Uh, here is the, the hardware or software setup info. The host, the guest, the QMU, and the Kata version. Mm, this is the evaluation for boot time. Uh, I once started uh, uh, the, the run a simple uh, container application. Uh, you, uh, you entered the, the hello world and exit at once for 10, uh, 100 times, and then calculate the average data for boot time. The exit x axis is the boot point time difference to the starting point. The y axis is the uh, the, uh, the millisecond time unit. Mm, we observed uh, uh, that the most gap is between the VM started and the agent started i.e. the kernel boot time and the cumul boot time. And uh, the boot time might be a little different between different configuration. The total boot time of the guest kernel is not so, uh, so, um, so long but we still found something to optimize. Uh, we reduced uh, the kernel boot time from uh, maybe 117 milliseconds to 81 milliseconds. Another tunable is uh, the uh, system D service, but given that, uh, most of the distro enable uh, system D. We didn't remove the system D as IPAL did. Uh, from this chart, we concluded that the boot time gap on ARM64 compared with x86 is not the guest kernel boot time. This is the tuning items. And for example, we disable the, the PMU initialization uh, if the user doesn't want to use it. And uh, by default, uh, the SCSI scan mode is uh, synchronization mode. We can set it uh, to now. And uh, also, we uh, by default, uh, ARM64 will create uh, about uh, 30, 32 VM uh, virtual IO, MMIO devices. Even the user uh, doesn't use it. 
uh, we can disable it uh, by default uh, uh, in the kernel configuration. Uh, there is a one an, another uh, way to speed up the uh, boot time. It is more aggressive. That is the VM template. The VM template is a a new feature that enables uh, the new uh, VM creation using a cloning technique. Uh, when it is enabled, the, the new uh, virtual machine are, virtual machine is uh, created by cloning from a pre-created template, and they will share the same uh, initial RAMFS kernel and uh, uh, the and the agent uh, memory in read uh, read only mode. It's just like a process fork. Uh, it is ex expected that uh, Kumu doesn't write anything to the guest uh, RAM until the virtual machine started. But uh, it does in uh, ARM64 Kumu. So uh, the, there is very exception on ARM64 when when we enable the VM template feature. Uh, actually, the room block uh, DTP will be filled, uh, filled into RAM during RAM, uh, room reset. Uh, in incoming case, the room filling seems to be not required since all the data have been stored in memory backend already so we mm, we bypass we actually we bypass that process and uh, make it uh, uh, the, the make the vm template uh, enabled uh, on arm 64 mm. This is the, the binary size performance comparison. Uh, Kata will uh, start, a, start a guest with limited pro, uh, memory or CPU resource. Hence, uh, reducing the binary size code size is a tuning aspect. From this chart, we reduce binary size uh, for Kata binary about uh, 20 to uh, 30 percent. We also tune the 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 VMM uh, currently only the QMU uh, by customizing the configuration and uh, stripping the binary uh, binary size. Uh, the binary size was reduced uh, by about 20% with configuration tuning. Uh, you know, we can uh, cut off uh, all the unnecessary device creation and uh, uh, by, by stripping, we can reduce uh, more 60% uh, for the code size. Uh, this is the memory footprint uh, perform for the co performance per comparison. Uh, you can see from this uh, chart uh, the possible reason why the virtual mem memory footprint of QMU on ARM64 uh, is bigger than that on x86 is the uh, firmware devices creation. Uh, there are two PFRES devices. Uh, uh, takes about uh, 128 megabytes. It will be created uh, unconditionally. 
uh, re the resident memory, uh, i.e. physical memory of ARM64, uh, the cumulative uh, footprint is as much as uh, or even better than uh, than it uh, uh, on ARM x86. Mm. So this is the comparison result. Uh, this is the the resident memory summary for the uh, for the size com uh, comparison. Uh, uh, sorry, for the the go agent and uh, cut uh, go run time process. The the size uh, of two. Uh, architecture is close or even the same. Uh, this is the the net uh, network uh, uh, throughput. Uh, the, you know uh, the BBR and the cubic are different uh, congestion algorithm. Mm. These are two TCP, uh, uh, these two different uh, congestion, uh, congestion algorithm uh, for the TCP in kernel. Uh, Kata will choose BBR as the default, but uh, from the test result it shows that uh, in the, lo uh, at least in the local, uh, uh, in the local uh, lab uh, environment, the BBI has lower performance th than the cubic. Uh, here is the test result. Uh, by changing uh, the uh, algorithm, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we increase the, the, uh, the throughput from uh, almost uh, nearly uh, 11 gigabytes to uh, 15 gigabytes. Mm, this is the performance tuning items, what we have done. Uh, enable the VM template, the FS DEX, uh, and uh, the persistent memory support. Uh, and they, uh, we change the, the algorithm from, uh, from BBR to cubic. Uh, these are, uh, finally, I will introduced uh, to two uh, user cases. Uh, you know, Baidu uh, is a dominant Chinese search engine operator. Um, in its uh, AI cloud, uh, the, the Baidu AI cloud is a complex network with a huge amount of uh, traffic and the complicated deployment scenarios. The peak traffic is about one uh, billion page uh, page views per day and uh, uh, 50,000 containers for a single tenant. So Baidu choose to use cut containers after doing extensive research on secure container technologies and determine that uh, cut containers is a highly secure and a practical containers technology. Besides, uh, as uh, one of the important founders and the maintainers, Alibaba use, uh, uses uh, cut containers in its uh, ECS BMANTO instance, plus Kubernetes as serverless infrastructure. So uh, that's all for today's presentation.
Uh, is there any questions? Uh, 